Do you ever get started on something and then realize it's a much, much bigger project than you originally thought? Well, that was this one for me. About a month ago or so, I bought uh, an Arduino starter kit. So it came with the Arduino Uno, some other things with it. So you can kind of learn how to program and stuff like that. Never done any of it before. I was like, oh, this will be fun. I can learn how to make some cool stuff. Um, it came with this LCD screen, the one right here. And I was like, hmm, imagine if I could get that display information like my, when the next tram is coming from my local tram stop or train station or something like that, as well as the time and the date and all that type of stuff. I thought, how hard can this be? Turns out it's completely doable, but wow, it is not always easy. Here is what I ended up building. So this has a LCD screen along the top and then a whole bunch of freeform electronics built inside of the plastic case. Um, and then a switch on the top accessible. It's also got a sensor up here so it can tell when people walk in and out. Um, it's got an LED here which cycles through a little mode. You can see it doing it there. Now I'll pull it out of the case and kind of give you guys a tour of how I built it and um, what everything does and what I have planned for it in the future. Um, so I'll start with the power supply. So this is a single 18650 battery. And then right at the top, we have a two amp fuse here. So I wanted to fuse this as close to the battery as possible because it's kind of an open freeform circuit, you know? Then I have a USB lithium battery charger. So you just plug this directly into a lithium or <laughs> into a, a USB port. Um, and then it will charge up the battery through the two wires here. So you can see this is connected across to the negative terminal and then directly into the positive through the fuse. Um, behind the battery, or behind the charger, sorry, you can see there's another wire here. This bypasses the little charging circuit um, and then it has a switch which then goes, feeds down into this module. And this is a DC to DC step up and voltage regulator. So it takes the three something volts from the battery and it makes it into a regulated five volt supply, um, which then powers all of my accessories. So we can come across to that. This rail on the top is the positive power um, and it goes and feeds everything it needs to. And then over on this side, we have all of the kind of logic and programming circuits. So the brains of this are on Arduino Nano. Uh, not the Wi-Fi one, just the original one. This is powered directly from the 5 volt rail here into the 5 volt supply input on the USB plug. So I soldered directly to that pin there. It's a tiny little pin. I was really scared to do that, but it worked pretty well. And this does two things. So this allows me to power the device up when it's turned on. So when this is powered, <laughs> goes in, it feeds through the USB. It's kind of a safe, easy way to do it. This also means that when I plug the Arduino into a computer, it's not drawing from the internal voltage regulator inside of here. Um, so it's drawing directly from the USB port. So that means that even if all of these things turn on all at once when I plug it into a computer, um, it's not gonna be drawing a huge amount of current from the Arduino. The Arduino this is kind of a safety feature. Um, and allows me to power that. So this can run up completely off USB as long as your USB can provide the um, the amperage needed to run everything here. So this is connected through a bunch of these wires to the various um, sensors and other components. So the biggest one is this here, which is a ESP01 uh, Wi-Fi module. So that actually runs off 3.3 volts. So you can see on this side here, we have a 3.3 volt regulator that pulls um, positive power off the five volt rail, and then underneath pulls negative power off the ground. Um, and then that powers, feeds over, powers the, um, the Wi-Fi module here. And then underneath it pulls the Arduino logic pins. Um, one feeds through, there's a clock pin, and then the other one feeds through this uh, uh, voltage divider there so that I don't fry the um, circuitry inside of the Wi-Fi chip with that. 
So you can see you have a I squared C, um, uh, what's it called, module attached to this LCD screen. So that allows me to run just two of the wires or two connections from the Arduino into this. Um, I was going to wire it directly up, and I probably could have, but the more wiring with this, especially with this free form, it means it can get pretty difficult. You have to plan a lot of kind of where everything goes. So you can see there's a grouping here of three of three wires that come out of the Arduino. So this goes across, and this feeds into a little LED kind of module I built. So these are all uh, pulse width modulation pins, so I can vary the brightness of the LED. And I have a circuit here, so when it kind of goes into um, standby mode, it flashes this, and it flashes each of the, or pulses, I should say, each of the different LEDs inside of this. This is a tricolor LED in a kind of um, different wave pattern, so you get an interesting mixing of colors. There's another little thing here, which is a little CDS photo cell, and that actually, is running through the ground. So the LEDs all run through that. They run through this photo cell into the ground. And the idea behind that is it acts as kind of a um, brightness control for the LED, right? So when it's really bright out, it's gonna allow more current to flow through the LED. This will get brighter, and it'll be easier to see. When it gets really dark, you don't want the LED to be as bright. So this acts as a little bit of a, a kind of step down for that. And then you can see I have another resistor here across those poles. So that is, if it gets really dark, the LEDs will still always run at a low brightness level. Or if, say, I burn this CDS out because I'm using it not in the way it was designed for, then the LEDs will still function as well. This here is a little um, photo cell. So this um, is connected to po positive power here. It goes through. One of these wires goes to the uh, input pin of the Arduino. And then it has a pull-down resistor here as well. So the main parts of the frame here are... Um, one millimeter brass wire. So you can see all of this wiring here is all just one mil bent, and then I've got it soldered in some places. Um, for some of the spots where I needed a bit more strength, I used 1.5 mil brass tube. And the reason I use that is because it actually nests with the one mil wire. So you can see here, I ended the brass tube, and then I soldered inside of that a wire that then goes across, in this case, is the ground wire. But that allowed me to have a bit more strength in rigid G in here, and then still wiring into the um, into the connectors quite well. And that's it for the device. I will be updating the software and adding features as I go. But for now, I'm quite happy with how everything looks and how the software I have functions. Hopefully, I can get the actual tram stop thing to work. It still does not work. I need to sign up for the Transit Victoria API, so um, I haven't got around to all that type of stuff yet. I may do another update video regarding some more of the um, changes I'll be doing with it, um, features I add and such. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. See you next time.